my question so no yeah, so can you repeat once again the questions which you asked so the disadvantages right which all disadvantages did you mention for one database per service one database per service what are the disadvantages that you mentioned for yeah yeah disadvantage which i mentioned like uh, load balances will reflect like uh, loads will be there uh, like instead of single database if you are using in multiple microservices then load will be increased and uh, like a scale up yeah how how the load will be increased can you elaborate like uh, all the microservices uh, uh, there will have some uh, tables so that tables uh, structures uh, so we they need to fetch the details like once users has created order ID then uh, based on the order ID will create a store so that order uh, stores or database already there in the same database so that columns or maybe tables will be there for this orders so uh, that will be called uh, so multiples uh, uh, like uh, object will be created and uh, database which will be called different different instance so for that load will be increased if you create a separate uh, then that load balances and load will be uh, managed through this that's, is that a database uh, per service problem or that's a microservice uh, uh, problem uh, mo yeah mostly in microservices based but uh, instead that uh, no, no, business... but that the problem that you are referring to mm -hmm. will it arise because of the one database per service uh, design pattern or because of how you designed your microservices because of one database per uh, for service how come right if you have let's say you have a employee data mm -hmm. and you are, you have microservice which will manage the life cycle of the employee data mm -hmm. there will be only one uh, my employee data available and there will be only one responsible service to manage the employee data right mm -hmm. if you if you have designed your microservices boundaries very well if you have designed the microservices boundaries very well then the problem of these that you will not split your employee data database into multiple micro multiple data sets like one microservice will only manage employee id and employee name the other microservice uh, will manage the payment uh, details the third microservice will manage the uh, uh, let's say the leave details if you are managing it this way the obviously your structure will go haywire right yes correct. and that is the yeah. problem with your microservices design it's not the problem with the one design one database per service problem it's the problem of how you designed your microservices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clear? Correct? Yeah. No, yes. correct. I'm not sure. So. Yeah, yes. Fine. Correct. You are understanding what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I understand. Looks like either I'm not clear to you or. I'm not no, no, it's clear. So, yeah, go ahead. There is a question still on you, right? Uh, actually, I'm not sure for this question. So I'll check uh, because uh, database and all. So, what is the core area that you work on on a day-to-day -day basis? Day-to-day uh, -day basis, like uh, developing uh, microservices, some of the cases we need to uh, implement these changes. So, when you say developing microservices, what is it that you do exactly? Recent, recent one month or two months, what is it that you did in while developing the microservices? Mm -hmm. I like, uh, mm, uh, I worked on this like a promo operation. So, if users will become in this uh, uh, services and if users has created any uh, orders so we will validate this orders for the customer uh, if users can get uh, or purchase any insurance more than of 10,000 or 15,000 uh, in that for, for the particular month or maybe particular criteria which he fulfilled then uh, we'll have a promo code so that promo code we have a, uh, so we will face the details for based on the users like what type of promo code is applicable and which uh, like uh, uh, 
which criteria he is followed so as per this promo code will be fixed and users can get some notifications or in this while he want to payment so there uh, will have a drop down options so that microservices will fetch the details and it will be so pop up in like uh, this promo code of this 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 is showing you for you uh, if you want you can apply this promo code once users will apply it the promo code will be uh, uh, like a store in the particular database like users has taken this promo code and he get some this type of what is the go ahead if you want to attend the phone go ahead no yeah so uh, what is the boundary of the microservice that you are particularly working on uh mostly i worked on uh, order services uh, order promo services and then uh uh what slot. is that order what is the input to your service what is the output to out, output from your service what are the output connections or uh, io connections from your uh, service input uh, uh io connections like uh, input and output you are asking right what is input to your service what is output from your service and if you are reaching out to database or if you are reading some files mm -hmm. then what are those what is it that that you are reading from you will be working on some data right it's yeah. a microservices yes. it cannot hold the data in its memory and then process right. it mm -hmm. so yeah so input mostly will have a provided by the J, uh, like uh, client like uh, this type of info suppose if users will create the order so what will be the order id name uh, customer details what are the uh, insurance type and uh, okay. so multiple parameters which will be uh, like uh, send uh, or maybe documented in our uh, uh, confluence page so that we can uh, as a take uh, we can uh, create our dto classes and all and apart from that like dto request and all so once order is been created then that will be have some response so that dto uh, response classes also we will create uh, and then uh, that data uh, we will collect it and then send it to the based on this uh, any uh, http method so either we'll have a users my wait 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 amar mm -hmm. amarjit my question is very simple i think it's very simple and very easy to to answer i'm not sure why it's getting complicated so again help me if you're not understanding my question let me know uh, so that i can restructure my question okay my question uh, let me repeat my question so mm -hmm. what is the input to your uh, microservice so when i say input or is anyone uh, calling your service or you know how does it get invoked and what or what all parameters are coming to you what is it how are you processing those parameters and what is the output that you are giving mm -hmm. okay uh, so mostly uh, we'll have a multiple third party uh, which will invoke our my services okay so uh, once he will take my services uh, so we will provide some url so based on the url he will uh, take and fetch the details so that's a rest service right yeah for your microservice there is a rest service yes so what are the inputs to that rest service what are the parameters of that rest api uh parameters like uh, we'll have a like a get post put delete based method will be there and uh, okay. and uh, so for promo codes how could you have delete and put uh, methods no promo code will have a only uh, like a get so that get yes, the right details so and uh, again my question is very simple hmm. what is it that your service is doing what are the inputs what are the outputs if it is not clear to you feel free to ask me the counter questions mm -hmm. yeah so like if i am working for the promo code so what i am doing uh, like a uh, promo code we will fetch the detail for the customer and uh, customers uh, we will calculate the details and we'll check like what type of promo code is applicable 
so if input we and say like uh, we have a promo code id name promo value promo expiry start date end date and uh, validations which will be applied for how much amount so uh, users will have if a you business are getting promo details of expiration and all mm -hmm. as input mm -hmm. then what is it your service doing right you are getting the promo details as as the input mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, after that uh, not sure amarjit i'm why what is the difficulty levels okay let me try this way that's Sure. This is the last uh, you know, thing that I can try from my side. I'm not sure what's the difficulty level here. So this is a service for, let's say, vehicle profile. Yeah. The input. Here is vehicle details. Vehicle details. Then user details. So it gets the vehicle details and user details. Yeah. This is the micro. So this and then what it does it it basically stores that into creates a ident uh, you know vehicle profile. And stores that into database. Mm -hmm. So there is a gate API around this. Correct. Yeah. This is one thing. Now let's go to new slide. Now the same service. It provides the REST API to. associate vehicle and user right you have to associate your vehicle so your vehicle is purchased now that means you have to associate that vehicle to a particular user mm -hmm. so what it does is this gets the vehicle id so the input here is vehicle id and user id and there are stages in the association. So this whichever entity is responsible to call the API will also provide what is the stage of association. So you know you purchase a vehicle and you don't get a vehicle right away in hand, right? You have to you there is a waiting period where you have to submit your document process, complete the the, per, the payment process. And then after the processing is done, then you get the after certain again, certain uh, uh, waiting period, you get the vehicle, right? Yeah, that's the process. So this external entity is responsible to know that association status. Mm -hmm. and provide that as input to vehicle profile vehicle profile this is going to again this is the vehicle db so it will read the data from vehicle db it will process that association means it will create one record where the user details will be available vehicle details will be available and it will have the other details so this that's the uh, input so this is the input and and the output it provides is the processed vehicle profile clear yeah. or do you have still doubts so no, this is no. what i'm expecting from you what is that vehicle profile this is your service assume some order service that you are saying yes so what is the input coming to your service what is it storing mm -hmm. and what is it processing and so that process output should go out again right yes correct i'm not sure what mm -hmm. is the difficulty level so yeah try and explain again yeah so here also like uh, uh, suppose I, if i have order services 
so that uh, uh, order services will have uh, like uh, order ID, name, order type, what type of order is there, order amounts and all. And after that uh, order will be processed and then we'll have a uh, like uh, order status will go like order status has been complete in progress and all what will be the order name and these these details will be processed so uh, that also will be stored in database and done right nothing no output will be provided to anybody no no output will have a like a order status either uh, in in progress progress or maybe complete and then order name order type uh, uh, order amount uh, these informations which we will pass it to this output uh, once based on the order id uh, that I'm other done Amarjit from side okay i'm done from my side do you have any queries for me uh, no 